Now let's take a look at how we can export our geometry and maps out of ZBrush. So it's fine when we're in ZBrush working with our sculpt. We can sculpt on the, the millions of polygons that we have available, and we can also polypaint on those. But once we start to get, uh, want to get our geometry out into another application, we we'll want to have a lower res model that we can work from. So in, in, to enable us to get that detail back, we want to use normal maps and texture maps. So for the texture map, um, it's going to be uh, pretty straightforward. We already exported that out, and you can see it loaded up here. And then the normal map as well. It's already loaded up. So now we need to transfer this data over to the other application. So Go Z is going to be a great way for us to do that. If we hit this little R, there's this Go Z row right here. Let's hit the R. We can choose a different application that we have, may have on our system that's Go Z compatible. And you'll be able to go in and install Go Z. If you go into preferences, Go Z, you can uh, update your pass and, and reinstall. Uh, go Z, so it works with those particular applications. So let's just use, I'm just going to use Cinema 4D, uh, but you can choose whatever application you might have. If you don't, you can just kind of watch along. Um, so I'm going to use Cinema 4D, and I'm going to select this subtool. And one thing to keep in mind, I know with Maya, um, it does like, if you're using Maya, it does not like the uh, subtool to have a number in the front. And so I always find it safe to just sort of rename this temporarily um, because Maya doesn't like to, to use GoZ with numbers like that. Um, so we're, but we're working with Cinema 4D, but I'm going to go ahead and change this. Let's, uh, let's now activate it. So all we're going to do is hit GoZ. Let's see what happens. So it should take our geometry and send it over to Cinema 4D, which you can see it did. It actually opened it up and loaded up that... Uh, that object here. So there's our body. Let's take a look at the, the wireframe for it. So that's our kind of low res body. And then you, you can see the texture. If we turn that off. You can see it does have the texture included. And if we look at the material, it does have that texture added into the color. And it also has the normal map added into the normal, but it's a little bit difficult to see here. If we do a quick render, though, we can see that those normals are coming through. Now, you can still tell that this is low res because of the sort of faceting up here at the top. So you could come in and add a subdivision to it. And that would make it look a bit better. And so you can see that's just a one-button solution for getting your geometry out. And, you know, we did it with one subtool, but you could go in and, and use it on multiple subtools. You could use it on the visible subtools um, and get that geometry out. Now, another way that you could uh, transfer your geometry, if you didn't want to do like a low res with maps, you could do just a high res. So let me up the resolution on our body here. and Let's see what the, the poly count is for this. So on our body, the poly count is about 6 million, which is a lot. So what we can do, we wouldn't want to transfer that to another application, but we can decimate this. And what that means is we triangulate it. The topology is not going to look that great, but the detail is going to be there, and we're going to be able to transfer it to another application. So let's come in to Z plugin, and we're going to go to the decimation master. Okay. And let's say we're going to keep the UVs because it does have a texture on it. And let's also freeze the borders. And let's pre-process current. So this is where most of the calculations are going to happen. It's going to go through this process of calculating this. And then when we decimate, we'll be able to go back and forth and kind of pick the number that we want. But let's uh, let this think for a second. Okay, so once that's uh, pre-processed, the next thing is to actually decimate it. So we can choose an amount of decimation right here or a number of polygons or points. And then we can just say decimate current. So let's see what happens if we decimate this. So let's keep an eye on this detail here and remember how many polygons we started with. So let's decimate. So it's going to go through that process of decimating, which should be a lot quicker than the process of the, the pre-processing amount. So now you can see we're down to 2 million. And we didn't really see much change here, which is good. So let's try again. Let's go down to maybe 
And it's important to keep in mind these values are sort of absolute values from where you started. It's not. It's not. Uh, so if you don't, if you reduce it by fifty percent, and then you change it to twenty five percent, it's not twenty five percent of that fifty percent. It's twenty five percent total. If that makes sense. So I'm going to change it down to ten percent, and decimate it. Let's see what we come up with here. So down to, we're down to about 1.3 million, and still looks pretty good in those you know highly detailed areas. Let's push our luck a little bit. Let's go down to five percent and decimate. Again, keeping in mind this detail, still looks pretty good. Let's see if we can see. If we take a look at the wireframe, that looks really sort of messy. It's all triangulated, but our goal here is to get something that is workable. That is, we can import it into another application and that looks similar. So it's not going to be, you know, animator friendly, but it's something we could use to bake a map from uh, or something like that, or just do a render of. Let's try again. Now we're getting crazy. So let's get down to 3%. And we'll decimate that. So now we're down to, you know, three, 400,000. And so once you start getting down into those numbers, you can start to... Uh, be able to export this out. So if we did like 1%, you can see that still looks pretty good. Now this guy's not that detailed, so it kind of helps. But now we're down to 100,000. So that's a pretty big deal, being able to get down to 100,000 polygons from 6 million. You can see a little bit of faceting in some of these areas right in here. But you know, back here it looks pretty good, and this would be something that you could you could definitely get into uh, another application. So, for instance, if we come in here and you can see we don't have any subdivisions now because it's all decimated. So let's try to go Z this over uh, to Cinema 4D. So we'll just hit go Z, and now this is what we end up with. So get a lot of that that detail in there. You can see our wireframe; it's triangulated. So if you were to bring this into an application like uh, Cinema 4D or Maya, you know, you could use your high res and then build your low res off of it and then do your baking uh, in there if you wanted to. All right. So there's so much stuff to learn about in, in ZBrush. You're never going to learn it. Even in the, the time that we've shared together, you're, you're never going to learn everything. It's, it's just going to be a, a fun adventure of going through and trying different things. And they're constantly, Pixelogic constantly, uh, updating ZBrush with new tools and are constantly innovating, which is really, really cool. Uh, but it's also really a challenge to keep up with all that stuff. But it's that's really neat. With the Z Modeler stuff with this this version is really, really uh, an amazing addition. So I'd encourage you to check out some of our other ZBrush training and, and you can kind of get into some of those areas that we just sort of mentioned or touched on. You can get in much deeper uh, to those areas. So uh, I hope this has been a good sort of introduction to uh, ZBrush and kind of what it's capable of. Uh, as a, Again, as I said, if you're interested in more information, make sure to check out some of our other training. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.